come over here. Radiance courier. Touche. <laughs> over here now. Hello everyone. This will be a first video in a sort of new series where I take a high MMR player's gameplay, a replay and break it down to see what goes behind the decision making. For my first entry to practice, this will be done live and for the future videos it will also be done live, so expect a little less coherence, a little more fresh thoughts on the matchup and uh, well, feel free to drop any suggestions on what I have missed to talk about and what would you like to see next. Anyway, Storm vs Viper, let's go. So in advance, I know this is gonna be a tough lane. Viper is one of the best harassment heroes. I come with extra regen, tangos help here, and the salve helps here. And our main goal for the first few levels is to trade out our regen into his mana, and hopefully just stay alive to get that experience and a few last hits in the process. It is a tough lane, I will not be free farming, I will probably be missing on last hits. So my orchid timing should be already delayed, not only from the lane matchup, but also from buying extra region. Now immediately Wiper does not skill Q, he gets the W. This lets him push the wave extremely fast, so what happens is he gets level 2 immediately and can harass me with the Q. I have to get behind the tower, otherwise I'm gonna eat way too much harassment. And behind the tower is where he will drop line of sight and, and can't harass me anymore. And this, this is my goal, and this is his goal, to just run at me click you at all times. So behind the tower I go. If he tries to initiate, he will just get hit by the tower. So that's one safe place I have. Wiper's W is kind of a lot like shrapnel. This means you can actually deny uh, once you get the ticks down. Wiper of course also knows that and he can prepare the hits. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. As we can see, Wiper's play is pretty much the same. And here he kind of makes a mistake by eating a few hits and then going behind the waves. This means that any roamer that would teleport in with me, he would get a kill. I've also tried to harass him back, but I kind of misstepped and my overload didn't register because my passive was blocked by his puddle. And then what happened is uh, this use came around, saw a low health wiper and made a mistake of trying to kill him, so... The lane, which wasn't favorable to me in the first place, now became even more unfavorable. The wiper is quite low, he doesn't have any mana, so this is where I would try to go aggressive, but... Yeah, he just got a fresh bottle and I have no other moves to just teleport back because he will just right click me to death if I will attempt to go back under tower. So at the moment, this lane is a disaster. I am way behind on farm. On the other end, a wiper does not want to jungle because he's a lane dominator, so it's not like he's abysmally ahead of me, so the lane is kind of salvageable. I keep checking for Viper's mana. As long as he has a lot of mana or ways to regain it like mangoes, I will not engage him. I will play safely from behind, not wasting mana for harassment. The goal is to have the wave as close to my tower as possible. This allows me to safely pop in and out the high ground, eating minimal harassment in the process, because if he tries to follow me, he will also eat a lot of tower damage. This was kind of a lucky break for me. I was able to intercept Viper and get a kill. And this alone, this skill alone will have won me the lane, and now I'm free to farm here for as long as I like. So what this means for Viper is that because he lost the kill potential on the mid lane, he will probably get level 6 and attempt to gank side lanes, which is kind of what I want. If Viper isn't in the mid lane, I am completely free to just free farm. I will most likely not attempt to counter his ganks, because this means if I am free, I am free to supercharge my farm and get back on schedule for a fast orchid. So this is what I will do for the next 5 or so minutes. Just uh, push the lane. If Wiper isn't there, I will pressure the tower. If he is around there, I'll just last hit what I can and rotate back to jungle. If he does attempt to or walk at you with his Q, the best course of action is to just do short zips to break up his attacks. This way he can never stack enough damage to actually threaten a kill on you. And he will waste some mana in the process. Since I do not possess a kill potential myself on the enemy mid laner, this time Viper, my build up for Orchid means that I will just opt for mana region. This means two Sobi masks and not Robe of Magi, which would increase my kill potential. So I go for region over damage, which is what you should do where we plan to just farm and not attempt kills. If the enemy mid laner was someone like a Zeus, Shadow Friend, I would absolutely maybe grab a wand 
and the Robe of Magi. This will let me dive with bigger mana pool and bigger damage and get a kill. Looking at the network graph and the number next to the top timer, we can see our team is slightly ahead of the gold schedule. We're kind of leading and that is good for us. They are not currently snowballing out of control. The Viper did gank side lanes but I mean, all he got a kill was on a support while I'm just roaming freely around the mid lane collecting runes. So overall, uh, this early game stage is very favorable to me. While Viper does uh, kind of trail me on the network scale, on the experience scale, with all the traveling around the map and killing supports, he will get way behind levels on me. If I have a free moment and no one's threatening me, I will usually just merge the creeps with other creeps, thus essentially creating double camp for myself to farm. Also, I'm gonna hold on to this arcane rune in case a nice opportunity presents itself for me to get a kill either on the wiper or teleporting to the side lanes. I am full mana, I keep myself full with clarities, there is no need to use the rune right now. If anything, I will just use this to help me get to the next rune, which might be contested. And right now, I did contemplate going to top to use my rune for maybe a kill, but I mean, it's three people there. I would get a kill on support, but that would not be worth it, even with the arcane rune and the risk is too high. I might get a kill of support, yes, I would most likely get a kill of support, but again, it's just a support. Why would I do that when I can just pressure mid lane? And that's what I do. Viper again. Viper gets a kill on a support, and look at that, he's still level 8, while I am halfway to level 10. If Alchemist would have stayed in the mid lane, I would probably have jumped him and got a kill. There we go, securing the 10 minute rune, and now I'm on the lookout for kills. I saw Grimstro going to the bottom rune, but it's way too late, he got away. And I'm not chasing anyone else because it's just not worth it. Just gonna get back to mid lane. I would use this 10 minute catapult wave to help push the tower, but wipers in the lane. So it's not gonna work out for me, I'm just gonna go back to jungle. Now my team is currently seen roaming around the enemy jungle looking for pickoffs, and they really want me to join the fights. But None of these heroes are easy for me to kill. Alchemist can just pop ultimate, Viper is tanky, very tanky, so I am really unwilling to go, even if everyone is pinging me and telling me in the chat to like help kill, but no, it's it's not worth it guys. Just let me farm my orchid and then I will instigate the ganks. So yeah, as you can see I did hang around. If maybe the correct opportunity presented itself to help kill, but they chose a very bad engagement, Alchemist, Viper, no, there's no way I'm going in. The risk isn't worth it, so I'll just fall back to the jungle, get my Orchid done. I do get it done by minute 12, which in the harder lanes is very good timing. And from there on I can look at my targets to kill. Viper is an unlikely kill, I would have to perform an extra big jump to knock down a significant chunk of his HP to actually kill him, do not go Orchid. So I'm not gonna target full HP Viper. Alchemist, sure, if he's not on his ultimate, sure, it's an easy kill. Slardar is a bit tanky, so it's kind of the same as with Viper. If he's full HP, it's a risky. And the supports, the supports can die all the time. If I see a support pushing alone and he's close to me and I don't need to do a big enough jump, I will jump the supports. And there we go, first victim. The point about early Orchid is nobody ever expects it, so you can just your first kill, you will force a few rotations, create space, and from there on they will they will catch on. They will ping Storm Spirit missing, they will ping Storm Spirit Orchid minute 12, and they will hang try to hang in pairs of 2 and 3. So the surprise factor is where we first get Orchid. You can use it, you can get killed on anyone. They will try to move together and they will try to itemize against you. Like Viper, he already itemized against me, he now has a Atos. So it's even more unlikely I will try to pick up him, but what I will do is I will still hang around the mid lane until the tower dies and respond to ganks on, on the towers. So while I do have early orchid, it's not exactly easy from this point on to just roam and get kills. But on the other side, it is also not easy for them to defend. They know Storm is a major kill threat, they will not want to hang around a tower where they know that if the enemy team groups up they are screwed. So they will most likely hang around their jungle. And this is where we can always pop in, get a few pickups, and get back to our objective. Which for now is still the mid lane tower. 
mid lane tower gives us access to both the Archangel entrances. It is a great tool for securing mid lane runes. So you should always, as a mid laner, you should always prioritize having yours and not having theirs. So yeah, now the tower is down, I am able to move a bit more freely around the map. I will still try to defend my own, to deter any pushes, make sure the wave is going to their direction. As for items, I'm gonna get Yules next for basically Addos. If they can get Addos and chain stuns on me with the Chikuro and Alchemist, it's not good for me. So this is a good stepping point to counter any soft roots I might get hit with. I'm not gonna bother finishing boots, because even with the boots, the Viper and the Alchemist is an unlikely kill target, so it's not like boots are helping me. And I'm gonna use the unspent gold on actually finishing the use. As you can see, they will move us 3, 4 or 5 now, trying to hunt me down with the Eidos. So, yeah, even though I have Orchid, I don't have real kill potential unless someone is solo. But as I said before, the threat is still there. So if they try to initiate, if they try to engage my team, I will always be around, ready to counter the gank. So they are very, very unwilling to go 5 versus 5. And anytime a lone support shows on lane on the minimap, it's just a matter of seconds before I jump on him. And from this point on, I'm significantly fat, I'm gonna build Bloodstone now, because they are way behind, so it's not like they will be comfortable going 5 versus 5, I don't need BKB straight away. If the lanes went a bit more their side, I might consider BKB, but here we are 3k gold ahead as a team, I am leading the network, so I'm just gonna use my earned gold and experience to continue being in threat, and just double down on my offensives, and get a Bloodstone. Gameplay wise, the plan now is to choke their team of the farm, same as before, until they have defenses like a BKB. It is unlikely I will jump into 2 or 3 first, I will still aim for pickoffs, but then again, we are controlling the map, so it is not exactly hard to find some. Yeah, I think the most complex part is over. After all, all we're gonna see here is just us picking up heroes until we're fat enough, and then ending the game. So, again, this was a live recording, please let me know in the comments what I may have missed to talk about, what would you like to see next. And yeah, this will be a series where I'll take a replay of a meta mid player mid hero and just break it down like this. So if you're looking forward for more, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, leaving you with the rest of the match, thank you for watching, good luck. Was coming. Touche. Somebody's on a roll. That's four to roll. Two down. I'm getting a second wind. Now over here. Radiance courier. Touche. 
Callously murdered. Invisibility. Radiance bottom tower is under siege. Radiance bottom tower has been destroyed. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Not that I care one way or the other. Radiance bottom tower. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is being attacked. Radiance bottom tower is up. You're allowed to start trying now.
Radiant's bottom tower is under siege. Dire structures have been fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is being destroyed. Radiant's bottom tower has been destroyed. Radiant's bottom barracks is under attack. Radiant's bottom there. <laughs> Radiant's middle power is under attack. Radiant's middle 